All right, let's be real for a second. Everyone is talking about AI, and some are even calling it a revolution. I mean, you have CEOs promising that we're building super intelligence and politicians saying that this is the new Manhattan Project. But if you stop listening to the marketing teams and look past the manufactured demand, you see a very different story. You see a massive contradiction, one that very few people are even talking about. While we're all told that AI is moving at light speed, that the technology is improving exponentially every few months, the accounting departments at these companies are telling the IRS and their shareholders that the hardware they are buying today will last for six years. Both of these cannot be true. And when this contradiction finally snaps, we might be looking at a correction, a correction that could make even the dot-com bubble look like a warm-up act. To understand the trap we're in, you have to look at the concept of supply-side gluttony. Historically, every time a revolutionary new technology appears, we make the same mistake. We get so excited, so excited about the future, that we build the infrastructure before we even have a profitable use for that technology. In the late 90s, it was fiber optic cables. Telecom companies spent over $500 billion lying cables across the ocean floor. And they did this because they believed a statistic. A statistic that said that internet traffic was doubling every 100 days. And because of this, they thought that demand was infinite. And were they wrong? By 2002, less than 5% of that fiber was actually being used. It was dark fiber. It was billions of dollars of glass buried in the dirt, generating zero revenue. And today we're doing the exact same thing with AI. With chips, with hyperscalers, companies like Microsoft and Amazon are promising to spend nearly $3 trillion on AI infrastructure. They're building massive factories for intelligence. But here's the problem. We're building a 100 lane highway for traffic that might only need two lanes. Just like in the year 2000, the stock market is rewarding them for spending the money, not for making a profit on it. Now, let's look at that accounting contradiction I mentioned. This is where it gets a little technical, but stick with me because this is also where it gets fun. When a company buys a chip for say $30,000, they don't pay for it all at once, at least not on their books. They deprecate it over its useful life, and if they say the chip lasts three years, then they'll take a bigger hit to their earnings than if they say it lasts like six years. Then they'll take a smaller hit and the profits will look that much bigger. Recently, Microsoft, Google, and Meta have all extended that useful life of their servers to about six years. Google even admitted that this one change added nearly $4 billion to their income in just a single year. But think about that, six years in AI time? Six years is a century. Nvidia is releasing a new vastly superior chip every single year. And the CEO of NVIDIA has explicitly said that when his new chips come out, you basically can't give the old ones away. So now we have a situation where the tech giants are telling their investors that these chips are long-term assets, but the technical reality is that they are just ice cubes melting in their server racks. And the craziest part is that they know it. In a recent interview, the Microsoft CEO even admitted that he was terrified of this exact same problem. He said that he didn't want to get stuck for four or five years of deprecation in one generation because the tech moves too fast. He is saying the quiet part out loud. He knows that the hardware will become obsolete instantly. Yet the financial statements are still booking these assets as if they're gonna be useful until 2030. And this is an illusion, an illusion of deprecation. So while these companies are hoarding their expensive hardware, the ground is shifting beneath their feet. For the last two years, the narrative was that you needed a hundred billion dollar supercomputer just to compete. And that was their moat. Only the biggest players with the deepest pockets could build state-of-the-art AI. But something strange is happening now. The cost of that intelligence is collapsing. Open source models are now rivaling the best of proprietary systems, giving away for free what used to cost hundreds of millions of dollars just to develop two years ago. Techniques like distillation, quantization, and a mixture of experts' architectures are letting smaller teams achieve results that used to require nation-state budgets. Look at the API pricing wars. Companies have been slashing prices by 50, 70, even 90%, not because they're feeling generous, but because the cost of running those models is plummeting. Every few months, someone figures out how to do more with less. And this is the classic pattern of commoditizing technology. Intelligence is becoming cheap and abundant, 
just like bandwidth after the fiber crash, just like computing power after Moore's law kicked in. And here's the problem. If you're spending $3 trillion building factories to produce something that is getting cheaper every single day, your return on investment evaporates. Those $30,000 chips aren't assets, they're liabilities waiting to be written off. The hyperscalers are betting that demand for AI will grow faster than the cost falls. And maybe they're right. But if efficiency gains outpace demand, if we can do more with less, then we're building a massive industrial complex for a product the market can get elsewhere for a fraction of the price. A product that the market might not even want. S&P Global surveyed over a thousand companies this year. They found that 42% abandoned most of their AI projects, up from 17% just one year earlier. The average company is scrapping almost half of its AI initiatives before they ever leave the pilot phase. Gartner predicted that at least 30% of generative AI projects would be abandoned after the proof of concept by the end of 2025, and it turns out that they were being optimistic. We call it pilot purgatory. Companies build a demo that works great in the lab, and then they try to deploy it in the real world, and everything falls apart. Data quality issues, integration nightmares, and no real clear return on their investment. And the result is billions of dollars spent on experiments that never become products. And here's the number that should terrify every investor in this space. According to McKinsey, only 6% of companies are seeing a meaningful bottom line impact. 6%. 74% are saying that they haven't seen any tangible value at all. So, here we are building $3 trillion in infrastructure for a market where three out of four customers can't even prove that the technology is helping them. Right now, it's like they're selling shovels in a gold rush, but where most of those miners are coming back empty handed. And we're already seeing the cracks. Baidu, the Chinese tech giant, recently had to write off a massive amount of servers because they weren't efficient enough for the new AI models. They are the canary in the coal mine. We're heading towards a moment where the market realizes that trillions of dollars of infrastructure is essentially dark fiber. When that realization hits, the write downs will be in the billions, the revolution will be real, but the price tag, that's a hallucination. Oh, and one more thing, I just want to be very clear about what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that AI is fake. I'm not saying that it won't change the world. In fact, I use these tools every day. They're genuinely useful. The internet changed everything, but it was still a bubble. Fiber optic cables revolutionized global communication, but 95% of them sat dark for a decade. The technology being real and the investment being a bubble are not contradictions. They're the same story that we have seen over and over. The companies building useful tools, the ones solving actual problems instead of chasing hype, you'll be fine maybe even better off when the inflated players collapse and the talent scatters. The revolution is real. It's just not going to pay back the $3 trillion on the timeline that Wall Street is betting on.